I have a confession to make. I hate leg day. It is my absolute least favorite day in the gym. I would much rather be doing a bench press than a squat, but I never skip a leg day. And a big reason behind that is because leg day might actually just make you live longer. Now, we all know exercise in general is good for your health. I have done many, many videos on this, but research has found that leg strength specifically might be linked to a longer life. And not just a longer life, but a longer and healthier life, which means more mobility in your older age, stronger bones, and less chronic diseases. So today we're gonna to be exploring this a bit more, find out what exactly the research is saying about this, but also find out why exactly it's leg strength that's so important. And if you hang around long enough, I'll show you how you can test out your leg strength um, to give you an idea of where you are. So, let's go! So legs have the most amount of muscle mass in your body. Most of your muscle is here. So it makes sense if you have strong legs, you likely have a fair amount of muscle. And I want to just quickly look a bit closer at the legs for a second. There are a number of large muscle groups here. On the lower leg, you have your calves. On your upper leg, we've got the quadriceps in the front, so where your thighs are. And then behind them, we have the hamstrings. And then just above those, we have the glutes as well. And all of these muscle groups, together with your joints and your bones, they control your movement, your mobility, which means they are important for movement, balance, and stability. So when you reach 60 years old and even beyond, if you want to be able to move quite freely, then it just makes sense to train your legs. And that is exactly what research has found. Um, a study from 2022 looked at a group of about 1,700 older adults. So these people were aged between 50 and 75 years old, and they found that those that were able to stand on one leg and balance there for just 10 seconds were more likely to be alive seven years later when they followed up compared to those who couldn't stand on one leg for 10 seconds. And this isn't the first study that's found this. There was another one from 2014, so that's even earlier. And this one looked at about 2,700 men and women. All of them were aged 53 years old and they made them do three tests. One was the grip strength test, uh, the other was how quickly they could stand from being seated in a chair, and the last one was the standing balance time, which is how long they could stand on one leg with their eyes closed. Now, eyes have to be closed during this test because your brain actually uses visual cues to help you balance. So by closing your eyes, you just remove that and it makes the task a little bit more difficult and gives you a better idea of how well you can balance and how strong your legs are. But anyway, getting back to the study. So they got these participants, they made them do these three tests, and then they checked in on them 13 years later, which means that they were no longer 53 years old, they were now 66 years old. And what they found was pretty interesting. The people that couldn't perform these tests or the people that scored the lowest as well, they were less likely to still be alive at 66 years old compared to those who had the best scores. Now, of course, the three of these tests, not all of them rely on leg strength. Grip strength is mainly your arms. But the other two, standing from a chair and the one-legged balance test, those are pretty reliant on your legs. And interestingly, it was the one-legged standing test that was the best at predicting the chances of someone being alive or not after that 13-year period. The people that lasted less than two seconds were three times more likely to have died compared to those who were able to hold it for 10 seconds or more. So that's a quick test that you can do for yourself even right now as you're watching this video. See how long you can stand on one leg with your eyes closed ideally. Um, I've put on the screen here um, some times that you should aim for based on your age. But generally speaking, the longer you can do this, the better. And if you can't hold it for long, let's say you can't quite get to the 10 second mark, then you know what you need to work on. You just have to keep working on your leg strength and keep trying this until you can increase it to 10 seconds. These are just some of the studies that have found a link between your leg strength and balance 
with longevity. And it's really important to know this isn't about muscle size, it's about strength. It's the strength of your legs and your ability to stabilize and balance. I don't really care if you have massive legs. Um, if you can't balance, there's just no point. Now, just for fun, I decided to actually have a go at this myself and see how long I could balance. Um, I'm 29 years old, so I should be aiming for well over 15 seconds with my eyes closed. Now, I didn't actually know how this was going to go because my legs have been fairly weak ever since the car accident. But for this time, I did manage to get about 35 seconds standing on one leg with my eyes closed. So that's pretty good, but I think it would be good to try and push that out further and further because as I get older, that will only really decline. Now, if you're wondering why exactly having stronger legs would help you live longer and give the results that these studies have found, I'm going to go through that. So the main thing I think is mobility and bone density. With older adults over 65 years old, falls are one of the main causes of injury, hospitalization, and even death. And the best way to prevent falls is to maintain your bone density and work on balance and mobility, which having leg strength directly helps with. Doing resistance exercises to increase leg strength also helps maintain bone density. And the more leg strength you have, the better your balance tends to be. So I think that the reason that those people who are able to balance on one leg for longer in these studies ended up more likely to be alive after the seven or 13 year mark is because maybe they had less falls than those who couldn't complete the test or weren't able to balance for very long. Now, the other leading cause of death in the elderly is heart disease, something that I have again mentioned many times on this channel. And leg strength has actually been linked to having less chronic disease. So that would be conditions like hypertension, type two diabetes, uh, high cholesterol, heart disease, and also osteoarthritis. And if you think about it, this makes sense. We know that exercise prevents chronic conditions like the ones I've just mentioned. And if someone has strong legs, it's also just very likely that they lead a physically active lifestyle. Now, focusing specifically on heart disease, you might be wondering why leg strength in particular could keep your heart healthy as opposed to just regular exercise. And if you remember what I said in the beginning of the video, I said that the majority of your muscle is in your legs. So if you're doing a leg workout, for example, Lots of blood needs to go to the legs to supply these larger muscle groups like your quads, your hamstrings. Um, they need to be supplied with oxygen. And to move that large amount of blood to your legs, that actually requires your heart to work a little bit harder. And that's where these benefits to your heart would come from. It's your heart adapting and becoming stronger to meet the needs that you place on your body. And legs being such a large muscle group, they would work your heart the most. Does this mean you should only be doing leg days? No, this doesn't mean you should only train legs. It just explains the link between leg strength and lower heart disease rates. Exercise of any kind will still be beneficial and a balanced workout routine that has some cardio, some resistance exercises that target all muscle groups in the body that to me is still the best way to go about fitness for general health because the leg strength will just come naturally from that now the last thing i wanted to just mention and talk about is the link between leg strength and brain health there have been some studies that show that leg strength or leg power can protect your cognitive function so one of these studies was actually a twin study and it looked at about 324 female twins. Uh, their average age was 55 years old. And they checked the leg power of these ladies using a leg extension machine. And they also checked their cognitive function as well. So this included memory, reaction time, processing speed. And then 10 years later, they repeated the same tests and they found that leg strength was hugely protective against cognitive decline, which would mean that those ladies that had um, more leg power, 10 years later, they were less likely to experience cognitive decline. And again, not the only study to find this. There have been a few studies now that show that exercise and having more lean muscle could prevent cognitive decline. Now, again, it makes sense that leg power is the thing that's being looked at because the majority of your muscles are in your legs. And when you do weight based exercises, your brain actually gets very involved. Um, in gym terms, you may hear some people call it the mind-muscle connection or the muscle-mind connection. 
Um, and it's to do with the fact that your brain cells work very, very hard to make your muscles move the weight or do the exercise that you're trying to do. Working these muscles really activates your neurons and forces them to make stronger connections. And that's how it can be beneficial for your brain to make it stronger. And it's why weight training in particular can be very good for your brain health. So if you think about it, strong legs are good for your bones, your mobility, your heart and your brain. So is it really a big surprise that you might live longer if you have stronger legs? I don't think so. I think it makes a lot of sense and it's why even though I hate leg day, I still continue to train my legs. And you should too in whatever capacity that you can. Whether that's doing squats or going for a walk, anything is going to be beneficial to your health and help you play the long game. So I hope this video has been helpful. If you have any questions, please comment and I will do my best to answer them. I will see you in the next video and until then, keep playing the long game. Mm -hmm.